Hey, what's going on everybody? TTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE. ASRock was kind enough to send over their Steel Legend version for review, but they're not going to be reviewing this video before it goes live or anything like that. I've been excited about this mainly because it's definitely a much cheaper card than the regular 7900 XT or XTX, but it's offering some absolutely amazing performance. This card isn't exactly brand new, but it is new to the States. It's basically new for us to be able to buy it here, and uh, this was actually released in China a while ago. But they've brought it here. We've got 16 gigs of RAM. Obviously, we've got that ASRock Steel Legend version, so we've got a triple fan design here. Super beefy cooler, and those fans do support PolySync. On the channel, we've actually taken a look at the ASRock Tai Chi 7900 XTX. We had the white version and the black version. I did a couple builds with it. This is coming in a bit smaller. I mean, it's still a pretty large card. And with the 7900 GRE, instead of using three 8-pin PCIe connectors, they've cut this down to just two, so we can actually get away with a smaller power supply. Board power with this is rated at 260 watts, but, uh, you know, after everything's said and done, I think we can pull a little more from this. Personally, I've always been a big fan of ASRock Steel Legend design. We've got that white with those silver accents, a little bit of black thrown in there, and overall I do think that these are really good looking cards. With this, we do get one full-size HDMI 2.1a port, and when it comes to the display ports on the GRE, they're actually DisplayPort 2.1. And like I mentioned, when you compare this to the RX 7900 XTX, that one used three 8-pin PCIe connectors. We only need two on the 7900 GRE. Power has been cut down by just a little bit, but when we get over to the benchmarks in gaming, you'll see that this is still an absolutely amazing performer. And of course, when it comes to the specs of the new Radeon RX 7900 GRE, we've got 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at a 256-bit bus, 80 compute units, and this is cut down a bit from the 7900 XTX. That one has 96. We've also got 80 ray accelerators, 160 AI accelerators, 5,120 stream processors, a boost clock up to 2,245 megahertz, and again, total board power here is 260 watts, and that's really why we can get away with just having two of those 8-pin connectors. And MSRP on this is 549. Now, of course, in order to test the RX 7900 GRE, I'm going to have to slam this inside of a system, and recently I've been working on a much larger system for one of my buddies. Basically, what we've got here is the new Thermaltake CTE C750 Air. I mean, it's definitely a really big case. It's their CTE form factor. More room than I really know what to do with, but I mean, we can fit basically anything we need in here. I've got a Thermaltake 360 millimeter AIO on top of an Intel Core i9-14900K. 96 gigabytes of high-density Viper RAM here running at 6,000 megatransfers per second. The motherboard is an Aorus Elite AX Z790, obviously, since we're going 14th gen Intel. And as for the power supply, that's going to be handled by an 850 watt thermal tank. So we've got more than enough for the RX 7900 GRE. Remember, recommended power supply wattage is 700 watts on this card. So obviously, it's a bit of a tight fit given that the card is so big, but uh, I think we can definitely make this work. No, but in all seriousness, uh, I'm actually building this for one of my buddies who wants to slam an Xbox either Series S or Series X in here, along with a PlayStation 5. And, you know, I think we've got room, but I asked him why. He said because he can. I will have a full video coming up. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Definitely overkill. But either way, we've got the 7900 GRE in here. Let's get into some testing. All right, up and running. Everything's been working really great. Been doing a little bit of testing. Just wanted to give you a quick look here. As you can see, we've got the i9-14900K. And of course, the Radeon RX 7900 GRE. 16 gigs of VRAM. And one thing I actually was really interested in was uh, just what this thing's pulling. So I've got Furmark here. We're just going to go ahead and stress this thing out. Basically, put it up to 99 to 100% see it kind of fluctuating between 270, 290 watts. They state that the board power is 260, but we're working with a third-party vendor here. Now, uh, there's a little more that we can get out of this because we do have the ability to kind of up the power limit on this. Now, some people might not want to do this, but, uh, you know, just from an application like, let's say, Afterburner or even ASRock's tuning utility, power limit up by 15 watts. It's going to give us a little more. We can also do some core overclocking. I'm going to leave it right here. So if you did need a bit more out of it, it's actually pretty easy to do with the uh, GRE. 
Now, one of the big main features here with these higher end, newer Radeon cards is Hyper RX. A lot of games support Hyper RX. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, basically, if we turn it on here for, let's say, Cyberpunk 2077, you can see that AMD's technologies automatically get turned on. We've got super resolution, AMD fluid motion frames, which is frame generation, anti-lag, Radeon Boost, and so on and so on. Just kind of a mix of all of their technologies. Personally, what I've actually been messing around with a lot lately on these cards is fluid motion frames. Now we'll test this out with Cyberpunk when we get to it, but uh, basically a little bit of frame generation. And this can definitely help out up in that FPS, especially with some ray tracing enabled. So we know that these Radeon cards, you know, when it comes to ray tracing, setting stuff up to ultra in games like Cyberpunk 2077, just don't handle it as well as some other cards on the market. But with frame generation, this can really make a difference. Next thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks that I ran with this system here. And first up, we've got the OpenCL benchmark with Geekbench 6. We scored a 170,781. And just taking a look at their browser, it's coming in a bit behind the RTX 3080. And they've also got that 7900 XT listed. Sure enough, with the benchmark that I ran here, it's actually coming in just a bit ahead of that 7900 XT. I'm going to chalk this up to driver optimizations and just, you know, overall system specs that we have going on with this setup here. Moving over to 3D Mark, Firestrike with a really impressive 41,630. I also ran 3D Mark Port Royal, basically ray tracing test here. We're right there at 12,004. And the final thing that I ran here was Time Spy, and this is coming in really, really strong with a 21,956. Very awesome score here, but uh, you know, these are synthetics and now it's time to see how this thing handles real world gaming. First one on the list is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1440p Ultra with no FSR. And going into this game with a Radeon card, I've always had really good luck. By the end of this benchmark, we had an average of 152 FPS. Now keep in mind, this is at 1440p with no FSR. At 4K with no FSR, this average 83 FPS. So yeah, you could definitely play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 at 4K on this setup. I also tested out Horizon Zero Dawn with the built-in benchmark, and just knowing how this game performs with these type of cards, I just took it all the way up to 4K Ultra, no FSR, average of 81 FPS. Mortal Kombat 1, 4K, Ultra, no FSR. I knew that we'd have a great time with fighting games on this. I also went through and tested Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8. All 4K maxed out with no resolution scale. You're going to be able to run all of those games at 60 FPS. Borderlands 3, with this, I should have just taken it up to 4K Ultra. We're at 1440p Ultra, and we averaged 202 FPS with this game. No resolution scale. And originally, I thought I was at 4K, but I had my setup at 1440. Just taking a look at how well it's running at 1440p, I mean, you're not going to have an issue running this at 4K either. Moving over to my favorite racing game, Forza Horizon 5, 4K, Extreme, no FSR. And when I say extreme settings, I mean there is a preset for extreme, but once you go into the settings, you'll see that some of those aren't maxed out. So with this, I went through, turned everything up to extreme, and we had an average of 114 FPS. And the final one I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. I've got a few different scenarios to go through. But straight off the bat, we're at 1440p Ultra, and once we take that preset to Ultra, it takes FSR to quality, so I just left it right there. Not bad, we're getting an average of 95 FPS out of this game at Ultra, no ray tracing is on right now. But of course, there's a lot of people out there that love ray tracing, they want to see what this thing can do. So what we're going to do is head into the settings and take it to ray tracing Ultra, just like it is right now. And once we set this to RT Ultra, FSR goes to automatic. Not exactly sure how low it's taken. I personally don't think it's going to performance or ultra performance. Probably right there at quality. But as you can see, I mean, we're right there on the edge with ray tracing set to ultra. Now, this is more of an extreme test. Obviously, not everybody's going to go up to 1440 ray tracing ultra. But we do have something that will definitely help out with this. Heading into AMD's Adrenaline software, we could enable Hyper RX if you want to. It's going to take all those technologies, turn them on for us. And it really does help out, especially with a game like Cyberpunk 2077. But what I'm more interested in is showing off AMD's fluid motion frames. 
So we're just gonna enable this right now. We're using the same exact settings, 1440, ray tracing ultra, FSR set to auto. And now instead of running this game at around 58 to 61 FPS, we can get an average of 72. It's not a massive jump, but this is newer technology coming to these Radeon cards and it's definitely gonna get a lot better down the road. And Hyper RX will give us a little more, but that does utilize Radeon resolution scale. And I wanted to kind of alleviate that. It's not bad at all. And it's now playable with ray tracing set to ultra in Cyberpunk 2077. So I'm really excited that they brought this over to the States and the UK. We've now got that 7900 GRE, a much less expensive card with high-end capabilities. I mean, as you saw, we can definitely run games at 4K. You might need to add a little bit of FSR with some of the newer stuff, but you can definitely get by with it. One thing I'd love to test on this is some Linux. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments below. And it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or subscribe to the channel so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more about the ASRock Steel Legend AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE, I'll leave some links to their official website down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.